through some of the modeling coming up. We're going to break that down for you um, as we move forward through the rest of this live stream. So here we go. The infamous spaghetti models. As we are watching this closely, there is still, again, good agreement that we are going to see this thing turn. I know it's kind of unnerving for the people across the southeast that may be watching and be like, okay, this thing is still churning there. This thing is still hanging off the coast. It's a little too close for comfort. I get it. The models are in really, really good agreement. I'm going to show you what is actually steering this thing to give us the confidence that the models are on the right solution here, on the right path, so to speak, for this thing kind of turning away from the Bahamas and Florida and the southeast corner and even mid-Atlantic of the United States. You see here where the problem starts to, uh, starts to arise as we get off the coast of New England. Maybe Cape Cod's still in play. I don't think for an official landfall, but certainly impacts, maybe even direct impacts from this very large system same deal for us into Maine. We actually do have a member. This is the Hurricane Wharf, and it did very, very well with the track of Idalia. So we're going to be watching this closely. There has been some kind of hinting a little bit of shenanigans towards the northeast. That a little dip in the jet stream, which I will show you in one second, kind of pulls Lee back towards the New England coastline. So that's going to be something that we're watching. That would not be a good thing. It would be Sandy-esque. That's kind of what happened with Sandy, how we had an upper-level trough kind of pull the system right on into the northeast, kind of just rip it out of the ocean. Something similar, I don't think it's going to be as aggressive, that kind of turn. That was one of the things that made Sandy so bad as well. As we see, though, most of these little lines here, each representing a different model, kind of hone in on Nova Scotia maybe even up into Newfoundland, New Brunswick as well. We're going to all kind of clustered in there. I do think we are going to see those growing in, growing chances for impacts over the next couple of days. All right, so I, show, I told you that I would show you kind of what is steering. I believe that you can't really look at the models without knowing what is driving the models to say what they say. So here's the deal. Here is Lee right here, this little circular thing at the bottom of your screen. Again, we're looking at the upper level pattern here. These are heights. So the warmer colors, the oranges and the reds, are higher heights, meaning that we have higher temperatures, higher pressure involved. And when you see the kind of the cooler colors here, that blue, yellow, maybe some green popping up, those are lower heights. We have cooler temperatures aloft as well. So here is our dip in the jet stream. This is one of the reasons why there was some uncertainty last week because look how wavy these lines are up here. A wavy jet stream is something that's very, very hard to predict, especially when it is involved in steering something like a hurricane. Then you see the swirls out here. Here is our big, nice chunk of high pressure. That is our Bermuda High. This other little kind of blip right here, that is Hurricane Margo out there. That also was a fly in the ointment to accurately predict where Lee was going to go because it was kind of weakening the ridge, that area of high pressure that we just highlighted, on the eastern side. And we don't have a ton of data out there because Margo is just kind of chilling in the middle of the ocean right now. And we can't get planes out there. Hurricane hunters can't get out that far. We do have some commercial traffic that we can get weather data from and satellites, of course. But nonetheless, uh, that's been a problem all week as well. Here are the, uh, the Azores are over here just for reference. Here is the coastline of Africa. So again, this is that thing is way out there. Anyway, let me get all these lines off of the screen and put this into motion here. Now, what we're going to be watching here is kind of dip in the jet stream number one. And this is what is going to help pulley north. So this is why we are confident that the models are ac accurately depicting this eventual turn, even though, again, I know it looks unnerving that it continues to look like it's coming due west. Don't think that's going to happen because we do have this guy here, that dip in the jet stream. We have a little bit of a weakness. There is the pathway right in here. Kind of like a football play. So it's going to work its way up to the weakness on the western side of this big area of high pressure that's right here. And it's going to feel that tug of that dip in the jet stream that is right here. All right, so we're going to take this back further into motion and zoom things out. So this trough kind of lifts up and that continues to pull Lee northward. But then we have an, a secondary dip in the jet stream working its way down. And this was one of the things that was so uncertain because of how wavy the jet stream is typically when we have the wavy jet stream, we do have more storminess across the country. That certainly becomes evident as we get into winter time. But this right here, how this comes into play is going to mean everything 
for what happens with Lee that as on this rendition, Saturday 3 o'clock in the morning is hanging off of Nantucket near the coast of Massachusetts, closer to Cape Cod as well. Now, you saw that kind of push in. This is the Euro showing that we do have this dip in the jet stream right here, kind of yank Lee, which is right there, further inland towards New Hampshire, towards Maine, and then on the western side of Nova Scotia. This is one of the things that we still have to iron out. Is it going to glide kind of calmly, so to speak, where it will be super impactful for Nova Scotia? Or is it going to be aggressively kind of yanked back towards the coastline, which will make things much, much worse because now we have kind of these two systems playing with each other so we have still a lot to iron out and again we were not going to see direct impacts potentially anyway to land until we get into saturday and sunday so there's still a good amount of time to watch and i mean lee continues to be slow and slow and slow and take its time all right so one of the other things too we are going to see this weaken a little bit from a powerful major category three hurricane right now to eventually Category 1, again, this is nothing to kind of write off because we're going to be, again, seeing this go from a Cat 1 to a strong post-tropical system. But one of the reasons we are going to see it lose its oomph, if you will, from its major hurricane status, look at all this blue here. These are the sea surface temperature anomalies now, so the kind of departure from average. And you see all that blue. That is all of that upwelling or that churning up of the cooler water that lies beneath the surface, courtesy of what was Hurricane Franklin a couple of weeks ago. So we still have some ramifications of that, thankfully anyway, to help weaken Lee just a little bit. Now we do have kind of jet fuel right here. This is uh, kind of an extend extension here of the Gulf Stream where you see very, very abnormally warm water temperatures off of the New England coastline. Still though, it's going to be starting to undergo kind of that change to a non-tropical system where... We're going to be watching just for a kind of a powerhouse, big area of low pressure. More similar uh, for my friends that are used to nor'easters, it would be kind of like that. It's like a cyborg. It's like a kind of like you have, it's still gaining some of its strength in the warmer waters, and it's getting its strength from differences in temperature and pressure in the atmosphere as the two kind of combine there. And we have this hybrid system, this post-tropical system. Regardless of what happens with land, this thing is going to chew up the East Coast. Even for Florida, even for the southeast corner of the United States, it's going to bring some very dangerous beach conditions. Look at this. I mean, we're talking about this system being far away from Florida. There's the center right there, nearly 800 miles away, and we are still talking about the potential for 9 to 12 foot waves just offshore of the Florida beaches will likely have wave heights crashing at about 6 to 9, maybe even 10 feet right along the shore. And then certainly, of course, the Outer Banks, uh, Cape Hatteras, uh, we will see those very big waves, maybe even 9 to 10 foot or 9 to 12 foot waves crashing right along the Atlantic coastline there. And then, of course, you saw it. We're going to back this up again as we kind of uh, went past the pause point. But regardless of what happens, look at that. We have 12 to 18 foot waves breaking on the coast of Cape Cod, on the coast of New Hampshire, on the coast of Maine, and then certainly also into uh, a lot of the Canadian Maritimes. And then even gets worse if this, again, if this solution from the European model comes into fruition, this would be very, very ugly for, again, Cape Cod, for the coast of New England. Because look at those waves. That red is showing up. That's 18 to, 20 foot, 18 to 24 foot waves crashing right there and all of that water is going to be uh just be pushed through pushed in with that counterclockwise circulation again we have the low right there and you have winds going counterclockwise to kind of just force all of that water right on into the coastline so that's going to be something that we are watching as well also watching another area in the tropics we're going to get to that big red blob in just one second for reference here is margo here is Lee. Again, you can just look at the satellite. It really has not moved. It's only moving to the west-northwest at about 5 to 7 miles an hour. But we're going to be watching this. If you were with us yesterday during uh, Monday's Tropics Watch Live, we were talking about a yellow little blob from the Hurricane Center next to uh, this big, I guess yesterday it was an orange blob, but now it's red. 
there is a lot of thunderstorm activity out here trying to compete for the dominant circulation here. It's going to take its grand old time to get organized because of that. I, I made the analogy yesterday. It's kind of like puppies kind of playing. How you have a bunch of puppies just trying to jump on each other, trying to become the top dog, if you will. That's the same deal that we have going on here kind of with thunderstorms. So until we get one of those storms to be dominant, we're not going to know where that low-level center is to track. And then it's going to take a while for this thing also to get kind of consolidated around the main thunderstorm complex or the main towers of thunderstorms that are out there. The good news with this is, I think, relatively speaking, is that there does appear to be a nice weakness in that Bermuda high. This is a very weak Bermuda high, which is also one of the reasons why this is not going to go west toward Florida and to the Bahamas and to the Turks and Caicos, because there's just not a lot of kind of push or forcing behind this thing so here we go going forward and notice we have a bunch of little red areas here this is the euro model spin this is meteorologically known as vorticity i know it's a big crazy word but basically this is the amount of spin a couple thousand feet above your head and we can kind of see what's going on in the low, lower levels of the atmosphere so we can see that is lee there again that's the solution that we do not like that would be really really ugly for new england so we are watching that here is margo up here and then here is our new little entity likely to become a tropical depression by the weekend maybe even a tropical storm but you see here there's really not a huge chunk of high pressure we it's hiding just right in here and it's kind of like this and Lee is weakening it further. So if all shakes out and this does come kind of close by behind Lee, and it should, it's going to find that weakness and kind of go up and out. And then you see it kind of pinwheel right around that Bermuda high. So that would be a very positive thing. It also misses Bermuda to the east. Same deal with the GFS. I just want to show you some different models here. That is Lee in the first yellow highlight. Here is Margot. And then here is our big hodgepodge of thunderstorms. You see how those two are kind of a consolidated area of red, meaning that we have some pretty intense spin. Uh, it's very well organized. Whereas this, we have some lighter colors, meaning that the spin is weaker. And it's also strung out like a string bean. Whenever that happens, it comes really, really hard at first until we get some really good environmental conditions for those things to get together. But then you see over the next couple of days, it looks a little bit better. So there's September 15th. So really two, three days away. Again, as we get into the weekend, that is likely, at least on the GFS, already a tropical depression because you see those arrows here. That is a, a well-defined circulation at the surface. This is a little different, though. It doesn't just completely go up and out. It gets forced back to the west. And then, like Lee, it just kind of hangs out there for a little bit. With that weak Bermuda high, I would, at least at this point, favor a curve out to follow that weakness. We talked about how these things, when they're weak like that, they typically tend to follow that weakness, the storms do. But that is something that would catch your attention if we do have another powerful hurricane just hanging off the southeast coast in a very weak steering environment. So that would be something that we would have to watch. You also may notice these arrows. I know they're kind of very light on the screen, but they kind of go like this. We also have a very big area of high pressure developing over the Northeast. If we were to get a storm in that area at about that time on the 21st or 22nd, if that chunk of high pressure moves out to here, that's going to help to push it inland. That is way out into the future. You see, that's September 22nd. That's 10 days away. And I'm not too sure that we're going to get a solution like that to have that storm right there. But it is something that we're going to be watching, of course, as we go down the pipeline and kind of watch this evolve, watch the steering pattern evolve. How does it recover from both Margo and Lee kind of just jamming everything up right up through the Bermuda High? There's a lot of questions out there. Uh, that are going to take some time to be answered. But just know that we are not done yet with watching storms. Of course, we are still in the peak of hurricane season. The climatological peak was September 10th. We are still in peak season really all the way through October. It's that mid-August through October time frame. So we are always watching, of course. The water temperature is juiced. So we might be able to, unfortunately, take this deep into the season. 
Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are on YouTube and you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing as well if you do want to stay updated on the tropics and all things uh, Florida weather. If you are watching on, and also if you're watching on YouTube, download the Pinpoint Weather app. It is free. Pinpoint Hurricane app is the best tool on the market to track these storms. You're going to get updates as soon as a storm develops from the Hurricane Center. You're going to know about it. They push that right to your phone. Of course, you get live updates like this from us, real meteorologists, and you're going to have uh, the best ways to kind of track these storms right in the palm of your hand. If you are watching on Click Orlando, the same goes to you as well. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Again, we get together every Monday when the tropics are quiet regardless at 11 o'clock in the morning. And then when there's stuff going on, we have bonus edition of Tropics Watch Live. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. If you are watching on ClickOrlando.com, the Pinpoint Weather app or the Pinpoint Hurricane app, We'll catch you next time. Have a great Tuesday, everyone. We'll see you soon.